Once upon a time, there was a castle with friendly foxes. Attackers wanted to invade the castle, which meant a lot of trouble for the foxes. Looking from the top onto the castle, the foxes took their strategic positions to defend their home. Eight foxes climbed the castle wall, and one fox stayed in the courtyard to distribute arrows to his mates. All attackers also moved on to position, and the horrible battle began. The attackers shot arrows into the castle, and the foxes shot arrows towards the attackers. Each attacker shot only towards one particular fox that he could directly spot, and vice versa. The foxes were very clever. To make sure not to run out of arrows, they collected the arrows of the attackers in a big box. With the help of the fox in the courtyard, they redistributed the arrows according to the needs of each individual defender. Some foxes obtained more arrows and some less. By this clever move, that is, redistribution of arrows and shooting the arrows towards the attackers, the attackers got scared and ran off. The foxes successfully defended their home and lived happily ever after. So, what does the story of the foxes and attackers have to do with the Lettuce Boltzmann method, LBM? In the classical LBM, we first discretize space and turn our castle into a single Cartesian grid cell. The grid cells are typically chosen quadratic in 2D or cubic in 3D, but other forms exist as well. The arrows that our foxes shoot towards the attackers correspond to particles. In fact, each arrow corresponds to a whole set of particles, so-called particle populations or particle distribution functions. In the current sketch, we restrict the motion of the particles to nine potential moves. Either a particle moves to the respective neighboring cell, or it rests in the current cell. In the following, we denote these nine directions that the particles can move into by C0, C1 and so forth. C0 to C8 are scaled such that for a given time interval delta t, our particles exactly move from one cell to a neighboring one. To keep things simple, we will assume that our mesh size delta x and our time interval delta t are equal to 1. The vectors c0 to c8 are called lattice velocities. This very specific case, that is, a two-dimensional grid with nine velocity directions, is called d2q9 discretization. The transport of particle distributions to neighboring cells is called streaming step in LBM. It basically models the convective transport in the fluid flow. All distributions are copied to the neighboring cells. This also fills the current cell with a new set of distributions. Our foxes have also already shown us the diffusive transport. Locally inside their castle, they collected the arrows in a box and rapidly redistributed the arrows among each other. We basically do the same thing in LBM in the collide step. We let the particles collide locally inside each grid cell and so redistribute our particle populations. Both mass and momentum need to be conserved during collision. If we denote each particle population with F0, F1 and so forth, up to F8, we can compute the mass per grid cell row from the sum of the distributions. The momentum arises from the sum of the terms Fi times Ci. Now, how do we model the collision process? The most common collision model is given by the so-called Batnagar cross krug or just BGK model. First, we compute mass and momentum inside a single grid cell from the distributions that have just entered our cell. Then we compute the equilibrium distribution Fi eg. The vector product used, for example for Ci and U in this formula, corresponds to the well-known inner product. 
computing mass and momentum from the equilibrium distributions returns the same values for rho and u as if we used f0 to f8. This is basically due to a clever choice of our lattice weights wi. You may just do this computation by hand to understand what's basically happening and check out the isotropic structure of the lattice velocities and weights. The expression of the equilibrium function did not just fall from the sky. One can basically derive this expression from the maximal Boltzmann distribution in the low velocity limit. That means for flow velocities u, which are much smaller than the speed of sound cs. Finally, we relax our distributions fi towards the equilibrium distribution at a given collision frequency 1 over tau. Tau is chosen such that the correct viscosity of the considered fluid is obtained. For tau equal to 1, the relaxation process sets the distributions fi exactly to their corresponding counterparts fi eck of the equilibrium distribution. That means our BGK model basically pushes our distributions fi towards the equilibrium state. Due to numerical stability, tau needs to be in the range 0 0.5 to 2.0. Now let's put collide step and streaming step together. Starting from time t, the particle distributions first collide locally in each cell, resembling the collide step. Afterwards, the collided distributions are streamed to the neighboring cells. Yellow distributions leave the center cell and gray distributions from neighboring cells enter the center cell. These gray colored distributions and the yellow distribution for the rest population now correspond to the particle distributions at time t plus delta t. We can finally sketch the lattice Boltzmann algorithm. For a given number of time steps, we loop through all grid cells and execute the collide step in each cell. Afterwards, we carry out the streaming step to obtain the new distribution values at the next time step. The highlighted update rule for the distributions fi is known as the lattice Boltzmann equation in BGK form. That's the lattice Boltzmann method in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the small journey from castles to distribution functions. Have a nice day and see you next time, your super epsi.